So who am I? My name is Maddie Stone. I am a reverse engineer on the Google Play Protect team under Android security, and I've been there for about a year. Um, before that, I have about five years of experience doing uh, hardware and firmware reversing and exploit dev. So why do we even care? What is the whole point of this? Where are we coming from? So the reason why I'm talking and wanted to focus on anti-analysis techniques was very first off, the reason they exist is this whole sort of dynamic between us as malware analysts and the malware developers. And so we're both striving for asymmetric advantage, so they want to be able to create malware that super quickly that has the most market share that they're accomplishing their goal, while we want to be able to detect it that much faster. So that's this um, mindset that we're coming from of they can create anti-analysis techniques, but can we um, detect them and prevent them and get around them with less investment than it takes for them to develop them? So what is this anti-analysis technique? Basically, just to make it harder for you to figure out what they're trying to hide. Um, so that this is going to encompass all of anti-reverse engineering, anti-debugging, anti-emulation, all of those things I'm packaging up into anti-analysis. So let's take a step back and set the context. What's the story? Where are we? I, on the Google Play Protect team, we have so many apps coming in all the time, and certain ones are flagged for a human reviewer. When that's escalated to me, I want to take a look and decide as quickly as possible, is this benign or is it malware and should we start um, issuing warnings? So this app came up. It looked pretty normal, but there was one interesting thing. It had an ELF file embedded in the APK that just, it didn't look right. I couldn't tell if it was actually malware or not yet, but I also noticed that there were um, at least 100 other digests or APKs out there that also included this ELF library. So that got me in this mindset of one, I need to decide very quickly whether this is malware or benign, um, so that we can get protections out, but I also need to figure out why all of these different APKs are using it. So if you're sort of new to the Android malware analysis, we have our APK, that's your Android application, and in there you'll usually see it's mostly running on the Java code, which you will find in classes.dex. However, developers can choose to write and um, have functionality that is also in the C or C++ compiled code, and that's what we're talking about today. One of these ELF libraries, a shared object, um, that is um, embedded in the APK and has the native functionality. So, what are we talking about? We are going to talk about the Wedding Cake anti-analysis library, which is this native code. And why Wedding Cake? It's because it's got lots of layers. So we're gonna go over all of these different layers, why it's so robust, what makes it so interesting, um, and how can you reverse engineer it more quickly, and what would I have done instead of falling through for each of their traps along the way. So, once again, why Wedding Cake? Why is this interesting? So since doing this research, I have found at least 5,000 distinct APKs in the wild that contain wedding cake. None of these uh, um, samples are benign. All of them are wow malware. And one of the most notable aspects is the newer variants of the chamois um, Android botnet family, which this links to when the slides are posted, a blog post we did about it before, um, is using this to hide their functionality. So what Wedding Cake is, is it wraps the functionality that the malware authors are trying to hide. So this diagram came from the initial blog post about Chamois um, in late 2016. So what we're gonna focus on is stage three, which is the elf there. So that's what they had studied, analyzed back then. What's new is now you see this Wedding Cake packed jar. But once I finally got through all of the anti-reversing and anti-analysis techniques, the decryption and everything we're gonna talk about today, what I found was I had just unpacked the packed unpacker because that's what stage three was. So I was able to then say, yes, this is a part of this family and I now know that this, um, these signatures of this elf, which I've now called wedding cake, um, just wrap everything else. 
So what are all these different techniques that we're gonna talk about? What makes it so interesting? First, one of the things that's interesting is previously in Android, um, what we had seen is generally if someone was going to implement anti-analysis, anti-debugging types of techniques, they were usually still in Java because that's what the malware developers were already using. It sometimes has a lower point of entry than C or C++ compiled code. So the first notable thing was that all of this is in native code. First, we're gonna start about some of the JNI or Java native interface manipulations. Then we're gonna go into some places where they've used anti-reversing techniques, in-place decryption, and finally to about 40 different runtime environment checks that they use. So none of these in and of themselves are super novel, but the fact that they embedded each one in each other is what made it so complex and difficult to both signature, um, reverse, and understand what was happening. So what's the characteristics? How can you notice if you've seen it or not? Very first thing is that 